I have never seen such determination in my life. Rodolfo, this one's for you. The Jewel Thief is an extremely simple circuit that allows you to use virtually all the power from a battery, even when to other devices, that battery appears to be completely depleted. It may look like magic, but this arrangement of components is nothing more than a voltage amplifier. So in this video we will see how the Jewel Thief works. But first I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. With PCBWay, bringing your projects to reality is easier than ever, as they offer a wide variety of PCB prototyping services for all your needs. Imagine this, you design the heart of your project using their multiple PCB options, then you let their expert team assemble the components, and finally you create the housing or any mechanical part needed with their CNC and 3D printing services, all in one place. But that's not all. If you are new to PCBWay you will receive a $5 bonus on your first purchase, which means you can get your first 10 PCBs completely free. Don't miss out on this amazing offer, go check out their website right now. To understand how it is that you can revive a battery with the Jewel Thief, we must first talk a little about how batteries work. These are energy sources whose voltage depends on a chemical reaction, so they should theoretically generate a consistent voltage over time that depends only on the chemical elements that compose it. However, as the energy stored in them is used, the reactions no longer occur with the same efficiency and its voltage begins to decay slightly, although it always maintains a relatively constant value over time. Because of this, when the voltage of the batteries is reduced below the minimum voltage required by a device to operate, it will not turn on or will do so with a lower power, which leads us to conclude that the batteries are no longer useful or are discharged. However, it is highly likely that there are unreacted chemical elements inside, which means there may be unused energy. Incidentally, energy's unit of measurement in the international system of units is the joule, this being the reason behind the name of this circuit. There are multiple variations of the Joule Thief as a circuit, but we will focus on one of the simplest, which consists of only five electronic components. A 1.5 volt battery, a resistor, a bifilar toroidal coil, an NPN bipolar junction transistor and an LED that will only light up if its voltage exceeds 1.8 volts. While I have already explained in detail how each of these components work in previous videos, Let's quickly review the behavior of some of them to then see how they work together. First we have the resistor. This is an electronic component designed to introduce an electrical resistance or opposition to the passage of current, a quality that is used among other things to guide the current through a circuit. In practical terms, when there are two paths through which the current can pass, and one of them has a high electrical resistance, most of the current will go through the opposite path. Because the energy tends to seek the path that presents less opposition to its passage. Second, the toroidal coil. This is a passive component that stores energy in a magnetic field when an electric current flows through it. When a current passes through a coil, it starts to generate a magnetic field, and due to Faraday and Lenz's law, this field induces a voltage in the opposite direction to the current that generated it. At a certain point, the magnetic field will stop growing, that is, it will become constant in the transistor and will cease to induce a voltage on the inductor, making its operation similar to that of a simple wire. Finally, if the current stops passing through the inductor, the magnetic field will begin to collapse, which will again induce a voltage, but this time in the opposite direction to when the magnetic field was growing. For the particular case of this circuit, the toroidal coil is also bifilar, that is, the coil is composed of two electrically insulated wires that share the same magnetic field. This way, when the magnetic field varies, a voltage is induced in both wires. And third, the NPN bipolar junction transistor. This component has three terminals, the collector, the emitter, and the base. In simple terms, we can imagine this component as a switch for the current, in which the base controls the amount of current that can pass between the collector and the emitter. In this way, if there is no current in the base, the connection between the collector and the emitter acts as an open switch, while if current passes through the base, the connection between the collector and the emitter acts as a closed switch that does allow the passage of current, which also increases proportionally to the current reaching the base, at least within a certain range of values. Now that we have a better understanding of each component, 
Let's look at how they all work together to create a joule thief. When connecting a battery and running the circuit, the current could take two possible paths. Path A, which goes through the resistor, the inductor and the base of the transistor, or path B, which goes through the inductor and is further subdivided into two possible options, the collector of the transistor or the LED. As of now, to facilitate the understanding of the circuit, we will ignore the effect of the toroidal inductor. If we consider only the first component of the path on the left, which would be the resistor, we can assume that most of the current will go through path B, given the practically zero resistance of the copper wire. However, once we get to the transistor and the LED, we notice that the current does not go through either of the two options ahead, since the battery does not have enough voltage to turn on the LED, and the transistor has no current at its base, which means that it is behaving like an open switch. Understanding this, path A is actually the only path through which current can initially pass. Thus, the battery causes a small current to begin flowing through the resistance and the base emitter junction, which in turn causes the transistor to begin conducting current between the collector and the emitter, such that current begins to flow through both paths. However, there is still not enough voltage to turn on the LED, or a reason for the current to attempt to follow the path that would allow it to operate. It is at this point that the inductor comes to solve all our problems. While we already looked at what the behavior of a bifiler toroidal inductor was, the way this is connected in a joule thief is also of great importance. In particular, the construction of the toroidal coil is made in such a way that the current passes through it in opposite directions with respect to each other, and because of this, the voltage induced in both wires by the varying magnetic field will also have opposite directions. Furthermore, since most of the current passes through path B, this path will be the one to control the behavior of the magnetic field. So, starting with the circuit off, as the magnetic field begins to build up in the inductor due to the passage of current through path B, a voltage will be generated in the opposite direction to the passage of current in this path, and a voltage that is added to that already existing in the path A. This increase in voltage on the first path causes a higher current to reach the base of the transistor, further opening the passage of current between the collector and the emitter, forcing the circuit to pass a higher current through path B. This, in turn, will cause the inductor magnetic field to grow as well, inducing a higher voltage on path A and causing more current to reach the base, repeating this cycle continuously. In other words, we have a positive feedback process that will cause the transistor to be turned on practically all at once, allowing current to flow through path B as if it were a closed switch. So far so good, but what about the LED? Unfortunately we still don't have enough voltage to turn it on yet. The magic happens when the magnetic field of the inductor stops growing and becomes constant. When this happens, a voltage is no longer induced on both windings of the toroidal coil, which causes the current reaching the base of the transistor to stagnate, causing it to return to its initial state. When this process occurs, the junction between the collector and the emitter will no longer allow the current to pass freely as it did during the feedback process, which means it no longer behaves as a closed switch. Because of this, the magnetic field will begin to reduce its size, again inducing a voltage on the windings, but now with the opposite sign. In other words, now the voltage will go in the opposite direction to the passage of current from path A, and will boost the voltage of path B. At this point, in the path the little current that reached the base, will be practically annulled with the passage of time, completely preventing the passage of current between the collector and the emitter, transforming it into an open switch. While on the other hand, the only possible alternative for the current to pass through the path B is through the LED, and moreover, we no longer only have the voltage delivered by the battery, but we also have the voltage induced by the magnetic field of the inductor that is collapsing in such a way that both together allow to reach the voltage required to turn on the LED. At this point we will have achieved our main goal of turning on the LED, however, this will not last long, because the conditions to turn on this component will only be met while the magnetic field of the inductor is being reduced, and obviously this cannot be reduced indefinitely. Once the inductor loses its entire magnetic field, it will return to the initial state of the circuit, such that the LED will turn off and a small current will pass back through the base of the transistor, repeating the whole cycle again. Moreover, because all this happens so quickly, even though the LED turns on and off continuously, to us it will seem that it is always on. Associated with this point it is worth noting that to control the speed of switching on and off the LED, it's just a matter of using a toroidal coil with less or more inductance, 
being necessary to use an inductor of a few micro or milliamps to see the effect. I hope you liked this video. If you want to know more about the components of this circuit, I'm leaving a playlist with each of them explained in detail. That's all for now and see you in the next video.